Rocket League is the mid-year sleeper hit of 2015. With practically no pre-release buzz, the game about soccer with cars has quickly won the hearts of the gaming populace and forced itself onto everyone's Twitch stream. It's affected us too. Together we've poured a more than embarrassing 60 odd hours into Rocket League. But why? Why is it so good and so popular? Today, we're going to look underneath Rocket League's bonnet and see how by combining parts of traditional sports games and other multiplayer conventions, it delivers a uniquely satisfying experience. Sports games like FIFA and NBA 2K are straight up simulations of sport. Rocket League is instead an adaption of a sport like Punch-Out or NBA Jam is. This removes the barriers that typically prevent people from playing sports games. Complex rules like offside do not need to be known. In fact, the only soccer knowledge you need is that you need to put the ball in the goal and the team with the most goals win. Building on that, the controls are simple. There are no complex inputs for dribbling, nor do you need to press a button to shoot. You just need to understand that cars move and the basic rules of physics apply. If you hit the ball, it moves. If you go fast upon impact, you'll hit it far. It may seem simple, but on the few occasions I've played FIFA, I just suck. Sure, if I spent enough time on it, I could get good, but Rocket League is more enticing. From game one, I had an immediate understanding and could just jump in without feeling disadvantaged. It's much more inviting. This theme of simplicity extends throughout the game, making it fair and as such engrossing. With a maximum of 8 players per game, there is less to contend with. You don't have to control a whole team, and you're always involved in the action. It also allows for functional cooperative play, as you and up to 3 friends can easily fill out a whole team together. Playing co-op in FIFA for example is just stupid and chaotic. You constantly have to change players, and actually fight with your teammates over who gets to control who. It also requires synchronization and intricate passing. In Rocket League, passing is just a matter of hitting the ball in a general direction. You still need to communicate, but only insofar as to say, I've got it, or leave it, or watch out. Returning to the example of FIFA, each player has different stats, so some teams are better than others. However, even when you have two teams of equal skill level, you need to know individual quirks like is player A left or right footed? Are they an explosive runner, born to play on the wing? Or more of a strong bull suited to fighting for possession in the middle of the park? In Rocket League, there are different cars from an aesthetic point, but each one functions exactly the same. Better yet, the ability of the cars remains the same throughout. Using the example of a MOBA like League of Legends, you start off with a bunch of possible characters with different skill sets and matchups. Once the game starts, you begin earning gold, and this affects what items you can buy and creates further advantages and disadvantages. Even a game like CSGO, which starts off all players on the same foot, has an economic system. It is skill based, but it again allows for considerable momentum swings and for players and teams to feel powerless or out of the game. In Rocket League, when you score a goal, nothing changes except for the scoreboard. So even if you're three goals behind, you still a chance to come back, because the other team have not been made faster or more powerful from having played better. You're almost always in the game, and if you're not, it's only because of how you played, not from potentially unfair game mechanics. As much as we've talked about Rocket League shunning the ideas of sports games, it is still a sports game adaption and better because of it. In the other multiplayer games we've used as examples, League and CS, the action is divided around the map. This means you don't see everything that happens. Rocket League takes place in an arena. It's a spectacle that everyone can see and something that has been at the heart of sports since the days of gladiators. It also captures the great spontaneity element of sport. Just one variable, the ball, is so chaotic and unpredictable that you'll consistently be surprised as to what can happen. There are so many angles and speeds to hit it from, and with that, it could go anywhere at any time. Like Hannah Montana famously did, Rocket League takes from the best of both worlds. From multiplayer video games, it takes successful cooperative play that involves all players. From sports sims, it takes the spectacle and the surprising. And then it also takes away from both what it deems redundant. It removes the complexity of stats and roles in sports sims, and the economic systems of multiplayer games. 
What this results in is a game you can play with your friends, in which you're all involved and can see the action at the same time. You all have the same stats, and the conditions of the game remain so, so how well you play is solely dependent on skill and experience. Rocket League is an absolute blast, one of the best multiplayer games we've played in the last decade. It's only 20 bucks, so definitely check it out if you're interested. Thanks for watching, my name's Lawrence. And my name's Josh, we'll see you next time here on Indie Format.